first test you always like to do. This is gonna be awesome, I can already tell. Pull that bone out. Ooh. And when it comes out clean like that, you know you did a good job. For another video um, it's been about three weeks since i've shot anything it's been i was down sick for about a week and a half and just kind of getting over the sinus stuff and uh just deer hunting kind of kicking in right now so everything's been a little bit busy but as you can see i got the smoker done um those of you who've been following along i appreciate you i really want you guys to keep up with what i'm doing here it's been a lot of fun i just like cooking building stuff so this smoker um, took me about, I guess, probably five months in my spare time just doing it. Um, had I had everything in my garage, I could probably build one of these in like five or six days. But busy life, you know, business owner, got family, got everything to do. So anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you a quick overview of what I did to it. Um, give you guys some ideas, uh, maybe some inspiration to kind of build your own. As you can see, I have the little Oklahoma Joe's next to it. And it's a 16-inch smoker, and it's pretty crazy the difference between the two when you see them side by side. The buddy of mine who gave me that one was like, oh my gosh, because this thing just dwarfs that. So 24 inches around, 48 inch long cooking chamber, uh, 24 inch long uh, spire box, 24 inches around. Um, just kind of show you what I did, things that I would do differently and things that I'm proud of. So uh, like I said, I just learned how to, to weld in, I got a welder in March. And I started learning how to weld throughout the year. And then I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I learned a lot about uh little intricacies of things it takes to do certain welds with different uh, thicknesses of metal and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I'll show you what I did, things that I bought, things that I made for it, and then uh, hopefully this inspires you to want to do something like this, um, this on your own. Okay, we're going to start on the firebox here. As you can see, um, these end caps were cut out of quarter inch steel. Uh, I had a huge, I had a half, a half of a plate given to me when I bought my wel uh, welding table from this guy. So I couldn't pass up on that. So anyways, I went ahead and picked that up. So quarter inch steel is not the easiest to cut, even with a plasma cutter when you're learning how to do all that. Um, so I cut the door out of the end cap, put my uh, deals on to line the, to keep the, the heat in. Um, I bought the air dampener and then I built this out of spare parts too, as you can see. Nothing crazy here, but just a bolt through there. Big old firebox. I put that grate in there from one of those old smokers that I uh, had. I buy and I flip. So I've done three of those so far. Another idea, if you've never seen those, you should check those out. Um, buy those old, old Oklahoma Joe smokers. Not the ones like this. This one here is the 316th steel, the original one from like 25 years ago. But those cheaper ones, you can get them a good deal. And you can flip those things for some money. But anyways, so you can see firebox. All I did was cut the end. I cut it off at that point. You can see the, the round end on this side here, sorry. Um, this is actually the other end. I built this little fire pit, so that's kind of cool. You never waste anything when it comes to metal work. Um, did an inch and a half, sorry, two inch by two inch square tubing for the base. Um, my only problem I really had was, you can see I have these little clamps on my door right here, and it holds it in good, but these clamps are necessary because I had about a, eighth of an inch spring on my door and this keeps it nice and snug when i'm doing it so anyway these are midwest hearth thermometers i was running it last night at about 350 and they were literally five degrees apart so really nice supposedly these are tr tell true repackaged so i'm not sure if that's true or not that's just what i heard um i did i bought this handle here off of Etsy. I don't even know. I just found it online. Um, it's a nice little handle, but I think what I'm gonna do next time, I like the long handle. I think this thing it looks better. So I built these hinges, bought all that round bar and that tubing there from uh, Home Depot, got some map gas, bent it, did all my thing with it. But anyway, um, as you can see, my, my holes I plugged back there aren't the greatest, but it works. Um, this little double diamond, this is kind of sentimental to me. This is uh, These are my uncle's initials, M and W. It's a thing he had, a logo he had for some stuff he was gonna, he had plans for. He passed away when I was about 13. Um, so it's been a long time, but it's still sad. But anyway, that was on a sissy bar I had for an old Harley of mine. And uh, 
I used to ride around with that on there, so I, wouldn't, I don't have a bike anymore. I sold it, so I cut it off, and that's what holds my door open now. Um, I'm going to run over here real quick, sorry. Oh, I got a bunch of wood delivered, too. So I got a big stack of cherry right here, and I got a big stack of pecan right there. As you can see, my smoke collector goes the full width of the cooking grate almost, so it has that air sucking through nice and clean. Built that little dampener opener. So pretty proud of it, pretty cool. Um, ran really well last night, and I'm gonna, I just got it burned in, so I'm gonna do my first cook. And that, of course, is 100% necessary right there when you're, when you're out here cooking all day. So I actually skipped deer hunting this morning because I, I really wanted to cook on it. <laughs> but anyway, I'll show you the inside next. Open this up real quick. So last night when I was in here, when I was cooking in here, kind of pull this over here real quick. Um, I was having a temperature difference of about 30 degrees or so, 25, 30 degrees coming up. I have a deflector plate in here, which I'll show you in a second, but I put this wood in here to kind of block some more of the, in, the direct heat from coming up and that really helped level it out. So it was pretty cool. Um, cooking great, as you can see, goes the whole way, slides out. Um, I plan on doing some cooks in the neighborhood and doing a little bit of catering and stuff on the side if I can get some gigs. Um, there's a brewery in town here that allows you to do uh, bring your you bring stuff up and sell it if you want to. They don't they can't do food um, in their in their brewery for some reason. But anyway, I plan on adding a second rack if that's the case, and I'll probably put more thermometers up top here. Um, this will give me some more space. I think the it gets a little hotter up top sometimes, but you can cook ribs up there or even like chicken thighs or whatever you want to do. Um, but anyway, got this all seasoned up. It looks a lot better now. I had, to, I had to grind. This is an old propane tank, so I had to grind in like all the, the the brown dusty this gnarly shit that was inside here off uh, sweep it out get it vacuumed out and then i burned it in and put a bunch of canola oil on last night so it looks looks pretty good plan today plan today is to do a uh a pork shoulder and then do some texas lollipops um I figured that'd be a pretty easy first cook. I don't want to go out and get a brisket today. I want to drive all the way to Costco. Um, plan was to go hunting today, but I ended up staying home. Um, anyway, so I was looking over here the whole time. There's the <laughs> wrong side. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be cooking at hopefully right around 250, getting the charcoal lit up now to help me get my fire going. But cook at 250 uh, and uh, use that pecan and that cherry wood. That's my favorite blend. That's what I use on the master build when I get those little, little chunks for it. But this, I'm doing full-size logs, so... Um, it was holding like really good temperature for a really long time last night. So the, hopefully I don't have to tend to it too much, but that's part of the fun is learning the new, new machine, learning a new, new smoker, and hopefully I can get some good results from it. So stay tuned for that. All right. So I've got a giant for here, nine pound, which is pretty damn big, uh, bone in, uh, pork shoulder. So I got a pretty big one from the store this morning. <clears throat> I think it was just a, uh, it was a cryovac one that comes. They have some if they actually, uh, they cut up and stuff themselves there, but uh, they were small. They were like four and a half pounds. So this is that rub that I make. It's got a little, it's pretty spicy, but you put this on a, you make sandwiches with it, with pulled pork, and you put a little bit of uh, blues hog on it, which is what we have now. Um, and that makes a really, really good sandwich. Kids love it. So I don't use no binders or anything. I don't think that really helps. I've never had a problem with creating bark. But anyway, I'm gonna get. I'm not gonna go through the process again of cutting up and showing you how I do the Texas lollipops. Um, you can do that. You can see in one of my old videos. I've done that before, and it's pretty simple. Just cut off around the bottom, peel it back, take it off, push it down, take that tendon out. Uh, there's a lot of videos on it actually. So get this thing. Out. I don't know about you guys, but I've always done pork shoulders, fat cap up. I'm not sure if it helps a ton, but. That's how I do it, and I do brisket's fat cap down. <laughs> tend to like the way the, the smoke ring forms a lot better when your, your uh, fat cap is down on it. But make sure you cover all sides, and you're good to go. This thing's probably gonna take seven or, probably eight or nine hours. It's gonna be a long time. Um, but it's only, it's actually 7.30. I didn't turn my clocks back last night for daylight savings, but anyway. Get this thing on here, and Kind of show you a little bit about the fire management that I learned last night. I was messing with different temperatures, adding logs and doing different stuff, uh, trying to figure out exactly what it takes. And it looks like it takes a chimney, uh, I think they call it chimney, chimney of uh, charcoal and three logs, get me up to that 250 range. And that's where I'm gonna start at. 
because yeah, they're full size logs and these things are pretty, there's a couple of those, the pecan ones are so dense. The guy that brought them over here, he goes, you can tell, if you couldn't tell by the color, you can tell by the weight and the weight of the pecan being a hardwood, way heavier than the cherry wood. So um, those are gonna burn nice and slow for a real long time. Uh, for the, the Texas lollipops though, Oh, there it is. I'm trying to keep my, my good rub separate, but anyway, this uh, Heath Riles garlic jalapeno, that's some pretty good stuff right there. So I'm gonna put that on um, half of those, and then you guys know, if you haven't seen, one of my favorites here is the Malcolm's, the Malcolm's Jam and Jerk. I bought the little bitty one to start with, but we all love it, so I went and got a big one when we ran out. Um, that stuff is awesome too, so I'm gonna do half and half on those, but anyway, I'm gonna get this all prepped, get that thing up to temperature, which will probably take about 40 minutes to make sure I got it really leveled out, and then get things rocking on there. Got one chimney of charcoal. Ooh, funny as I've had this thing forever. <laughs> and I think it's at a, it had a temp, it had a, yeah. We tried to sell it at a garage sale once for a dollar, and I'm like, I wasn't really cooking a whole lot with charcoal, so that's why I had to keep it. <laughs> save, save a little, little bit of money. All right, chimney's in there. I can't find my little scooper. Anyway, um, last night I did not have this grate in here. I think that's gonna help a lot, keeping uh, keep a little airflow underneath. So anyway, get those kind of spread out a little bit. So you got two pecan logs. One cherry. I'm gonna let that rock in there for a little bit. Get my get my door open. You don't want all that dirty smoke going straight into your cooking chamber, getting everything all nasty. So I'm gonna let these wood logs get uh, a little bit get going. And what I did last night too, I took my map gas and put them on there, and it's crazy. That thing lit up lit up so quick. But I'm gonna let these get rocking, and then I'm gonna start managing the temperature a little bit, and then I'm gonna get that pulled pull pork on. All right, as I'm getting this fire going, <laughs> one detail I forgot to tell y'all um, was I've seen a lot of people do like the linseed oil and like on these old Oklahoma Joes, even this one here, I've done canola oil just on the outside of it, get a hot fire in it and get the canola oil going. And I didn't really want to mess with, have to keep like reapplying and doing different stuff. So I contacted the guys um, that uh, from Rolla, Missouri, the Smoker Builder. Um, I think it's just called Smoker Builder on uh, uh youtube but it's also their uh, instagram handle and the guy frank down there super cool guy i ordered one of their hats too coming pretty soon but anyways i asked him had, had he ever used um the vht nightshades like uh high temp clear or rust-oleum high temp clear and he said he had and it worked pretty good so all i did yesterday was i wiped this whole thing down with acetone uh probably two or three times till i made sure there was no dust on it and then i just applied that um rust-oleum 600 degree um uh, clear coat and what that did was gave me a nice shine to it. It kind of brought out some more richness of the patina that I kept. Um, this was just a gray tank and it had the red primer and then you can see bare steel. And I stuck one of the little wheel, uh, disc wheels to it and uh, just kind of scuffed it up and made it look just kind of unique. That's kind of how I wanted to keep it. The one I'm gonna build for my buddy, he wants bare metal because for some reason he wants to paint it to look like a hot dog. And I was like, well, if that's your thing. That's what I'll, I'll do it for you. But that's all you to paint a hot dog on it. But anyways, um, that's the, that's what I have on the outside, and I'll keep you updated on how long I think that's going to last. Um, as long as water's beating up on it and uh, water's not penetrating into the metal, I'm not really too worried about it. Really, the only thing I'm worried about is these welds. Um, this is a pretty good side here. I'm pretty proud of this welding job. For me, just learning, I'm pretty happy with it. But I think the water will be beating up off this for a long time. Because even yesterday, when I had this thing rocking at 400 degrees, I took my gun and I pointed at this and I was uh, getting the temperature off of it. And it was only uh, like 480 degrees. So it didn't even reach that 600 degree threshold. So hopefully that's true and it'll last a long time. Because I really, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to find a cover for it. That's for sure. Um, so the next plan is to uh, build, I'm going to build a couple more of these. I'm going to build one just like this for my neighbor. And then I'm, I've got another tank left. I'm going to build... Uh, two more smokers. I'm going to build shorter ones that are, have a square box and they're going to be reverse flow. Got a really unique idea for the reverse flow plate um, that's going to be in there. So you're not going to get any radiant heat coming up towards your meat. So stay tuned for that too. Um, but anyways, I'm going to get this thing going. Temperature's sitting right about 
It's like 175 right now. I just started, so I'm gonna let it keep going. Hopefully get up to that 250 mark and then throw that pork shoulder in because you know it's gonna take a long time. So it's coming out pretty clean right now. This side's reading like right over 250, two, probably 255. This side over here is reading um, at right about 235. So it's about 20 degree difference right now. It kind of levels out once it gets really cooking. Sun's coming up. I gotta get this thing on. So one thing I'm kind of lacking too is it'd be nice to have a shelf or something to put this or to put on my stuff. So I'm gonna just put it right here for now. I'm gonna cook on this far side. I'm gonna run it this direction right here. And uh, hopefully I can maintain it. Yeah, it's getting right around that 245 mark. So it's gonna be holding temperature all day. And I'm just gonna have to manage that fire. I got that log still in there though, blocking that radiant heat coming straight up. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna throw that right there and plan on putting the, the um, lollipops right here. And that way they'll all cook together. I'm gonna wait till later to cook those though for lunch. But first cook, shoulders on. Can't wait to see how it turns out. All right. Pretty clean fire burning in there. I'm gonna add, so I did two pecan, one cherry. I will be adding one cherry, and what I do is just alternate when I add fuel back. This one, I'll go one cherry, then one pecan, one cherry, one pecan, and just try to maintain that temperature the whole time. So I'm learning a lot about fire management right now. We got uh, kind of a southeast wind coming in and it's blowing right into my door here. So something I like to keep an eye on. Uh, I, I came out here for being gone uh, inside for about maybe 30 minutes and my gauges were really high. So you can see this one here, hopefully, sorry. It's sitting right between 250 and 275 right now. It was sitting closer to 325. I came out here and looked at it. And this, uh, I was kind of worried that this little dampener right here wasn't gonna be enough uh, airflow, but I guess that's not right. That's completely enough. You see, I have it closed a little bit right now, about halfway. I had it wide open, and I also took, I added that cherry log, like I said I was gonna do, and uh, that cherry log and that thing being wide open made the temperature spike. So I pulled that cherry log back out. I'm gonna throw it back in here in a little bit, and I dampened that down a little bit, and the wind is just kind of doing what its thing. But anyways, that is keeping that temperature right where it needs to be. So um, fire management is super important. Just when you're learning something new, this thing is so big. It's just, uh, it's, it takes so much more fuel than that other one I have. So it's fun though. This is why I'm doing it. This is what I like to do. So it'd be a long day, but that's why I'm doing it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a first peak. It's been about two hours, um, but I've had a couple of fluctuating temperatures. I had it up as high as 325 and I got it managed back down to 275 now. Um, just had a little too much fuel in there, had a little bit too much air coming through. So it seemed to have it pretty much dialed in now. Uh, I'm going to probably spritz. I got apple cider vinegar and apple juice in here. Just want to make sure uh, this edge is get, uh, on the side isn't catching too much heat. So let's take a peek at it. That's not bad. They don't need spritz yet. But good color. Getting that red. Ooh, mahogany look to it. Burning my eyes. She's a smoking. All right. I think I'll probably give it two more hours and come back out and. Maybe an hour, but I come back out and do some spritzing, but it, it don't need it right now, so that's good. It's pretty sweet once it starts to settle in. It's not very far off from each other. They're maybe 15 degrees off, so it's pretty cool. Looking forward to doing some big cooks on this after this pork shoulder and these little chicken drummies. All right, three hour mark. I think we might be, might be spraying now, we'll see. Holding 250 on this side, pretty steady. I had to drop off there for a little bit. My I didn't realize my coal bed had gotten so small and it took me a minute to get my logs lit back up again. So everything's holding pretty good now. It's not bad. It's a little, a little crispy right there. A little, little bit on this side. That's what you'd expect. There you go. <sighs> I like the little spray bottle. I don't like those giant yard sprayers. I think it's just way too mean. If, you're, if your bark's not set really well before you do that and you start spraying with that shit, you're just gonna blast everything off of it. So I just do this. This is just apple, I call it the magic spritz, but it's uh, just apple juice and apple cider vinegar. Nice little spritz to complement what we're doing there. Just gotta maintain temperature and let it ride. Get this thing rocking up to 250 again. Thinking of after like six hours, um, I'm gonna put the meter, actually I'm gonna put a meter in it in about another hour and then I'm gonna monitor it until it gets to about 175 or until it's dark enough looking and then I'm gonna wrap it up. So here's my fire, to add a total of six logs. Um, not, never done a whole lot of cooking with huge logs. See that right there, that 
uh, moisture coming out. Sorry, zoom in there. Let me know in the comments if you guys think that this wood is still too moist inside or if it's just right. I mean, it catches on pretty quick. I'm used to using that wood chunks and the stuff you get from the store and it's always, always uh, really dry and catches on quick. So let me know what you think. Right, it's been almost four hours now, uh, getting close to lunchtime. So I figure that that big pork shoulder is gonna take a while. So I went ahead and made these uh, lollipops. If you've never done these before, check out one of my other videos I've got on it and how to make these. They make the chicken really juicy and it, it makes them so much easier to eat. You, you take that really hard tendon and all that junky part out that runs down the stringy side of the of the chicken leg and it makes them so much better to eat so it's kind of it, it's, it's labor uh, laborsome but it's worth the time so i'm gonna get these thrown on um probably go for about an hour and a half i'm trying to maintain close to 250 but um been having a little issue i'm not gonna lie but having a little issue managing my fire um I, i'm not sure if some of my uh if the wind's affecting it or some of my wood has got a little bit of too much moisture in it but um i just got it reset and got everything where i got an actual flame going and it's like burning real clean but it just kept going out. And I'm kind of wondering too now, if I don't have enough airflow, I might have to cut another square on that on that door and put in one more of those dampeners that I've got just to make sure I can get enough airflow going in. Uh, that one's kind of on the low side. I don't know if I need one on the high side too to let more air in, but um, I'm just gonna keep working at it. I'm not gonna do any, I'm not gonna do any sort of like cooking for friends or catering and shit until I get this thing dialed in. So it takes probably three or four cooks total, get everything dialed in. Um, that's also why I didn't buy a freaking eighty dollar brisket today, because I didn't want to make sure I didn't jack it up. So anyway, I'm gonna get these thrown on, and we're gonna uh, see how they turn out in about an hour and a half. Man, it is windy today. My my chairs are over here, and they were way over here behind me. So anyway, here are the lollipops. They always turn out freaking awesome. I did that uh, Keith Riles uh, jalapeno garlic rub, and then I just sauced them up with some blues hogs, something sweet, something spicy. Um, so they always turn out freaking awesome. We're gonna eat these for lunch. The shoulder, um, according to my meter, which actually is working good now, I got everything cleaned up on it. Did some troubleshooting. It's working great. It's at 129 degrees right now, and it's been cooking for maybe four and a half, five hours, so it's got a ways to go. So we're gonna enjoy this part right here for lunch, and then we're gonna keep waiting on that. So we've got a long day ahead of us, but it's uh, rocking really, really good now. I've got this thing dialed in, figuring everything out as far as maintaining my fire, my temperature, my cold bed. So it's been a been a fun day. Can't wait to show you the results of that pork shoulder when we get done. All right, let's see how these turned out. First bite. Mmm. Oh, that juicy. Mmm. Oh, dang. Sorry, you just missed a drip. <laughs> Look at that dripping. That is awesome. That right there is how you do it. Try these out sometime. Look up the video I have on my channel where I show you how to make these. There's also other ones too, if you don't like listening to me talk too much, there's other people that do it too. But man, with that Heath Riles on there, that spice and the sweet sauce, that is hard to beat. That's the juiciest chicken you'll ever have as far as legs go. Make them Texas lollipops. All right, so learned a lot of things today um, so far. The temperature on that pork shoulder is at 140 degrees. I'm trying to get up to 165-ish to get just a little more color on it. I'm liking the color it's on it now, but a little more color. Um, when the when the fire starts to get the temperature drops and the fire's getting a little bit low the amount of fuel this one takes compared to the little oklahoma joe's one back here which is nice um is very significant it's very much more so not letting the coal bed get to this plate uh, spot where the logs actually crumble down too small before you add wood is super important and then learning the dampener um i was talking about maybe needing a uh yeah, barbecue sauce and shit. <laughs> maybe need to uh, add another one on top i don't think that's necessary i think it's more necessary to keep the flow going and it's more necessary to make sure that i uh add fuel as it's getting close to that 225 mark and not let that fire get too small um you really got to mind it a lot that's just how it is um, that's part of the fun with craft barbecue and learning how to be an actual pit master um i don't consider myself a pit master when i work on that one that being said, I love that thing. Um, it makes really good food also, but just even the lollipops we just had, even my kids were like, the, you just can't match that. You can't match that with a machine like that. You don't get the smokiness, you don't get the, the everything into it like that. Um, as far as like the, uh, the smokiness and the tenderness you get from it, it's just amazing. So um, first cook going really well. Just want to give a quick update on the fire management part because it is not, it's different. 
way different than the other ones. So keep that in mind if you ever go the route with a big offset compared to a smaller one. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Everything else is going pretty good. Um, I, the ambient temperature reading on my meter was 248 degrees and the thermometer right above the pork shoulder was 250. So that was kind of cool um, to see a, you know, just a very, very small uh, swing in temperature between those two uh, the deals keeping track of the temperature. So very pleased with that too. Um, I had an issue with that meter, two cooks uh, in a row, but it, user error. Um, I had to scrape the bottom where the, um, where it plugs into the battery deal to charge. I had to scrape that off and get it clean. And then I had to wipe down the thing really good, the actual thermometer itself. And uh, that made a huge difference. So now it's working great. So user error. Sometimes people get pissed off at shit like that, but it's my fault. It wasn't the meter's fault. So anyways, on to the next one. About to get this thing finished up and get it wrapped up. And then uh, hopefully it'll be done by dinner time. We'll see. All right, cooking at 250. We're at the uh, five hour mark. Let's see. No, six hour mark. No, it's five hour mark, my fault. So, to me, it's juicing pretty good. It's got really good color. Um, it's, I really go off of color. It's only reading about 140 internal, but I think I really like the way the color's looking. Um, I'm gonna let it just go to 150 and not go all the way up to... All right, we've been sitting at about 140 now for about an hour, hour and a half. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get pulled off like the color on it anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it pulled off and uh, put in the foil pan. That's how I wrap. I wrap, when I wrap, I wrap in a deep foil pan. Do the same thing with briskets and always get awesome results that way. Um, it ain't the only way, it's just my way. So if you like doing butcher paper or you like doing foil, just straight up foil wrapping it, that's fine. I don't like anything touching it uh, when, it's, when it's wrapped up. I tend to keep my bark better that way and really like the results I'm getting. A little windy out here today, in case you wonder. Anyway, I'm gonna grab this thing off there and show you what it looks like. But, whoop, don't wanna drop that. Got some good color on it. It's looking awesome. So, plan is to get this baby wrapped up and get it done. I'm gonna keep that meter. I'm gonna keep the meter in there, and I'll just put the foil on around it and be good to go. It's a wild scene around here. Probably losing all my heat in the smoker, but that's all right. I'm gonna get it put right back on. So everything's wrapped up. Put it back on, probably three more hours. That's how you do it. All right, just pulled this bad boy. It said 203 on the thermometer on the meter that I've got in there. <clears throat> We're just gonna take a quick peek at it and I'm gonna wrap it back up in here. We'll let it rest for about an hour. I think an hour is good on pork shoulder. Pull that out too. She's hot, babe. <laughs> right. Ooh, yeah, I got that split up there. That's gonna be awesome. I'm just gonna probe it. Oh yeah. That's gonna come out awesome. See how easy that probes? That's exactly what you want. The bones over here, you can already see, it's got a good, it's got a good jiggle to it. You look in there, that's all, all that juice came out of that. I didn't add anything to it. So I never add anything to my pork shoulder. Typically just throw it in the foil boat like this, the foil pan, and let it ride. So I'm gonna sneak a little piece off of here and get it. It's really hot. Probably shouldn't, but that's all right. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's going to be awesome. So, let it rest for an hour. Come back and check it out. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes. I think this is a good, good and good time to get it pulled. Um, it's going to be a little hot, so I'm probably going to pull with these tongs, but we're, we're pretty hungry. Everybody's ready to eat. So, um, first test you always like to do. This is going to be awesome. I can already tell. Pull that bone out. Ooh. I'm gonna 
comes out clean like that, you know you did a good job. So that's pretty cool. Put that to the side. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull it on this today because I gotta get rid of some of this juice. It's there's so much juice, it's ridiculous. Tell you what. It's really nice though. But like I said, we can't wait. Yeah, it pulls it off really easy. Mm. Ooh, she's still hot, baby. Mm. I'm gonna get a little piece over here. I'll get some of that bark on there. You can see, I'll bring it over here to you. It's super juicy. It's all over my hands too. Bark is set perfect. Mm. Oh man. I made a lot of pulled pork. And I've never made one on the, well, on that obviously. I don't think I made, no, I never made it on, I made a small one once on an offset, but it was not cooked as well as this one is. It took seven hours of smoke, and then two and a half hours, three hours wrapped, and it came out freaking awesome. Tender all the way through, and not like so tender that you see people just smash them with their fingers, and they just turn to mush. Mush is not what you want. There's a fine line between having just enough texture and it being undercooked or being overcooked. And I think I nailed this one pretty good. So to say I'm proud of what I built and how I cooked this is an understatement. I am super freaking happy. So um, I have, ooh man, look at this. It's got some good smoke, look at that smoke ring. Can you see that? That is a good smoke ring right here. Plan is to do some comparison videos, um, like like two a beer can chicken and a spatchcock chicken. Uh, do some sets of ribs, like baby backs versus St. Louis style. Um, I'm also going to do some master build 800 versus the offset cooks, and just kind of see see how it turns out, see what everybody likes, and just not tell everybody what it is, and just see what they say. Um, awesome, very happy. So, if you like what you're seeing. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. I'm trying to hit that thousand subscriber mark. Um, I'm about halfway right now, and I already got my, my hours of viewing and stuff, so already gonna be pretty good, but I need more subscriptions. So tell your friends, appreciate it, have a good night. Look how juicy that is. What you know about that? Mm. Oh my God, that is so good. So tender. Smoke perfect. Good smoke ring. What you know about that smoke ring right there? There they are.